If you're writing a paper, you also need to write an abstract. And so this video is for you if you're wondering how to write a better abstract. Now, the abstract, getting that right, is actually quite important because the abstract forms the first impression right, of your paper when an editor looks at it or when a reviewer looks at it. So it's important to get a bunch of things right. And I have uh, four main points that I want to discuss here. The first one is pretty obvious, but you know, double and triple check with the help of a friend or something to look at the abstract to make sure that it is uh, free of typos and grammar errors because nothing makes a worse impression than like the first couple lines of a paper. And there's already a bunch of typos and grammar mistakes in there. So make sure you really double and triple check and take that seriously and make sure you edit it very carefully. The second point is follow the instructions. I mean, every journal, unfortunately, this is the way it is, has its own set of instructions for all kinds of the manuscript and that includes the abstract. So some journals impose pretty strict word limits on the abstract. Some uh, journals want the abstract to be divided in certain subsections. Some journals say like never divide the abstract into subsections. So to make sure that you are getting it into the right form, make sure you very carefully check the instructions for the authors because it will vary quite widely from journal to journal. The third and most important is the structure of the abstract. So basically the most useful way to think of an abstract is that it's a paper in miniature. It's basically just a mini paper with essentially the same structure as a main research paper. So it has a background, intro kind of a section and more like a method section, a results section and a discussion and broader implications kind of section. And make sure that you have all of these in your abstract because you can't leave any of these out. And so here is what those sections are about. The background section states what is the general problem that you are currently working on. And it depends on the journal a little bit, but it tends to be fairly broad. You know, it's just a fairly broad introductory sentence that sort of sets the stage about this is roughly the field that this paper is going to be addressing. And it ends then with a statement of purpose or a statement of the problem that you are going to be addressing in this paper. Kind of like the last sentence that you had in your introduction of the paper where you also have like a general background at the beginning, but now this is only one sentence. And then you have a final sort of statement that uh, says like what is going to happen in this paper. The next section says what you did here. It's kind of like the methods section or miniature, but it's just very, very, very condensed version of your methods section. You could say, for example, this was an observational study or this was a lab experimental study to do this and this where we modified that and that. So it gives it basically the, the general design and, and the general framing of that study. And this is sort of just an abstract, very condensed version of your methods in just one or two sentences. The next one of course is what you found. Um, this needs to be written as concisely as possible because you have a limited amount of space and so you need to make sure that you focus on just the main points because many papers have like a main storyline and there are some subordinate storylines and here you just write what is the main thing that you found in this particular study. And sometimes the methods and the results section can be sort of interwoven. For example, you would say we did this and found that and then we did this and we found this. So basically they can also be um, merged to some degree when they're very tightly linked to the methods and the results you obtained. Now where most abstracts seem to go wrong in my experience is that in the end they don't really tell you in the end what was learned. So this is the basically the discussion and conclusion section of your paper wrapped into just made me one sentence in the end where you explain in one key sentence what was learned. Now that we have done this, we move the field forward in this respect. So this final sentence of the abstract is, is really important and of course it cannot come out of nowhere. It needs to build on the rest that you have done. It can be quite a bit more general like an aim at a more general statement, but of course it should still be sort of um, connected to what you did. You cannot just come up with something entirely general when you did a specific study. But this is a very important sentence to focus on because it makes clear what the general implications of your study are. And most, this is the, <laughs> I think the bit of the abstract that fails most often in my experience. The fourth point is when to write the abstract. There are some people that say you should write the abstract maybe first so that you know what to focus on throughout the paper. This may work for some people. I 
Usually I write the abstract at the very last when I already know um, what's going to be in the paper and <laughs> what we found and what the what the, basically the conclusions are and what the broader implications are. Then I, I write the, the abstract as, as the very last thing I write in this paper. But either way, I don't think it matters a lot if you write it first or if you write it second, as long as it touches on all the main points. But I can see the advantage of writing it first because then it basically it tells you from the very beginning this is the main storyline. Make sure you hit that point in the introduction, make sure you explain the methods with respect to this particular point you're trying to make and also the res results in the discussion basically streamline it to make this one statement or this, um, this send this one message in the paper. But either way I think it works uh, to write it first or to write it last. So let's look at one example of a very very short abstract because that was a requirement for this particular journal. It's uh, starting with uh, the broad introduction, so soils underpin terrestrial ecosystem functions. That is a very, very broad statement to open that uh, paper with, and it just says like, well, soils are super important. But they face numerous anthropogenic pressures. So, but it says right away, this is the, the topic of this particular paper, that there are a whole bunch of things that are happening to soils. And this is what this paper is basically about. So the very first sentence already has sort of a, sets the, the, the stage in a very broad sense and then also basically says what the issue is. Now despite their crucial ecological role we know little about how soils react to more than two environmental factors at a time. So that's a more specific problem statement here. Even though soils are so important, um, it's most of the studies actually look at uh, just one or two factors and hardly anybody looks at more factors. And that's the end. So that's the, the background and introduction section in a nutshell in these two short sentences. Here we show experimentally that increasing the number of simultaneous global change factors up to 10 caused increasing directional changes in soil properties, soil processes and in microbial communities. Though there was greater uncertainty in predicting the magnitude of change. And this is basically a combined methods and results a sentence. It's just one sentence that does it both. Uh, but there are some keywords in there. So experimentally, so we show experimentally that this is the case. So that it tells you this was an experiment, not an observational study. It gives you some key details of this experiment. There are simultaneous effects of up to 10 factors. And there's the results. So we looked at soil properties, soil processes, and microbial communities and um, tried to predict these particular responses. And then in the end, our study provides a blueprint for addressing multi-factor change with an efficient, broadly applicable experimental design for studying the impacts of global environmental change. So this is sort of the broader implications. It's like we have developed this particular experimental protocol or design and um, it was efficient to gain access to some of those high dimensionality effects, for example, to look at impacts of global change and other people could do this now also. So that is the, the broader implications of this particular study. So those are the various components of an abstract and uh, as I mentioned it's very important to get the abstract right because it determines the first impression um, when the editor or the reviewers read it. But it's also important for indexing purposes, right? So I mean um, this is also one of the ways, including the uh, title and the keywords, one of the ways in which other researchers will actually find your paper. So you also have to be mindful of <laughs> using the right terms in there so it uh, helps your paper being discovered by search engines. So what, in the end, what can you do to be better? I mean, the most efficient thing to do to become a better abstract writer is to just look at a whole bunch of abstracts and every time you find an abstract that you like, you know, take note of like the phrases that we use, like here we show that or um, this, you know, a very broad sort of a starting sentence that uh, really you, you really like because it fits you. And so, you know, take note of some of the bits and pieces of abstracts that are really well done and then uh, try to incorporate them in some form in your own writing. So I think you will find that that will over time improve your abstracts. And I think as we already mentioned numerous times now, abstracts are important. So it's important to get them right. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.